In 2017, the Arizona Game and Fish Department made some big moves for bison conservation. It started really as sort of a hallway conversation a few years ago. A few of us were sitting around talking about the, the story of the near extirpation and recovery of bison. And that as wildlife managers, wouldn't it be neat and should we work together at a national, regional, and statewide level to further bison conservation? The former icon of American wildlife. And our answer to each other was yes. That led them to Wind Cave National Park in South Dakota. It's home to a herd of bison that are direct descendants of some of the last American bison to survive into the 20th century. North America was once home to millions of bison, but unregulated market hunting nearly wiped them out, and by the 1880s, only several hundred animals remained. The Wind Cave bison are the result of an early effort to conserve this iconic species. The origin of the founder herd was actually 14 animals from the Bronx Zoo in New York City, and then six from the Yellowstone herd. You know, we got animals from over 100 years ago from the Bronx Zoo where Teddy Roosevelt and some of the early conservationists grabbed up the remaining bison left out on the prairie and started a herd there. So we started with a really robust genetic herd and we've been able to maintain that now for over 100 years. Cattle genes are common in American bison herds, but so far cattle genes have not been detected in the wind cave lineage. So the wind cave genetics are um, pretty unique. We have 10 unique alleles within our herd which makes our herd very genetically diverse. And the only herd comparable to us is that of Yellowstone. Wind Cave National Park's grasslands can only support about 500 bison. So every two years, the park gives away excess animals. Thank you for all being here. The conservation groups interested in starting a satellite herd. We're gonna rotate through every age, sex of animal and who gets it. Maybe the first yearling goes to Arizona yearling male, then the second one goes to Kankakee Sands, and the third one goes to Smoky Valley. So this is gonna be a large operation. It's gonna take multiple days. These are not costing Arizona Game and Fish one penny. Uh, well, other than, than uh, the, the fuel it took us to get up here and, uh, and a, a semi-truck coming back. So it's, it's a pretty good deal. It was a deal Game and Fish couldn't pass up. So in October of 2017, the agency sent a team of biologists to South Dakota to help sort and process bison. Really what this whole setup is about is um, trying to get a herd of bison into a nice orderly single file line. And then finally get them into that, that last um, compartment you see into that blue squeeze chute. And that's really where the, the rubber meets the road at that point. Um, because the sides fold down on that, the gate's gonna drop down and kind of hold the head. And so that's when the biologist can get in there. So we have a one and a half year old female. Yes. They can draw blood to test for disease, attach an ear tag, and microchip the nice animal if it hasn't been chipped before. Okay, everybody's good, open it up. Open it up. This one's got a little nick on her hip, too. Uh, dry female, 118. Each bison destined for Arizona is checked out by Game and Fish veterinarian Ann Justice Allen. So my main responsibility at this point is to kind of check the animals over and see if there's any really significant injuries or um, signs of disease. Yep, right there. And then we're giving them two sets of vaccinations and also some dewormers so that if they have any intestinal parasites that they don't bring those intestinal parasites to Arizona. Alrighty. Arizona pin two. At the end of the process, the bison are directed into various holding pens. Arizona game of fish. These are Arizona's animals. The plan is to transport as many as 60 bison back to Arizona. It's pretty special. Pretty, pretty unique and pretty amazing opportunity. Arizona Game and Fish is the first state wildlife agency to start a satellite herd of wind cave bison. We know we can only grow our herd to about 350 to 500 here, 
but the geneticists will say, well, if you want to retain that genetic diversity over 100 years, 200 years, you need to get up close to 1,000 animals. Since 1987, nearly 2,000 animals have been exported to various Indian tribes, conservation groups, and government agencies interested in managing a satellite herd of wind cave bison. It helps the park keep its bison population in check while preserving its precious genetics. Fifty-five bison, all yearlings and two-year-olds, are loaded into a cattle truck for the thousand-mile drive to Arizona. The bison are unloaded at Raymond Wildlife Area, about 35 miles southeast of Flagstaff. The property is owned and managed by Game and Fish. It had been home to a small herd of bison that was removed to make room for the Wind Cave lineage. As the bison were getting used to their new home, another translocation took place in December. We'll just um, open up the gate and let them run into here. After a long overnight journey, 15 bison leap out of a cattle trailer and into unfamiliar territory. They were given to game and fish by the American Prairie Reserve in Montana. House Rock Wildlife Area once again has, has bison. It, it feels good, you know, we, we've, we've always had bison here. Uh, they just don't make it down into this country very often. With these bison, Game and Fish is trying to reestablish a herd at House Rock Wildlife Area. It's a Game and Fish property located just north of the Grand Canyon. Bison that lived here for decades eventually moved onto the Kaibab Plateau and into Grand Canyon National Park, where there's no hunting to manage the population. As a result, they're doing serious damage to the park's natural and cultural resources. Meanwhile, wildlife managers hope they can condition these new bison to remain on the House Rock property. It gives us the opportunity to reset breeding grounds and, and calving grounds back on House Rock, where we have more control of the, of the herd. It's one of the few spots in Arizona that we can, we can have them in here, yeah. Here in Raymond Wildlife Area. Both of these herds will contribute on a national level to bison conservation. Back at Raymond Wildlife Area, the Wind Cave bison seem right at home. They're actually mellow as can be. They're, they're doing their own thing. They're still getting used to the feed that's here. They're used to prairie grass up in North uh, South Dakota, and uh, the, the grass here is quite different. We will invite people to come out here and view them. We have a wonderful visitor center here. Whether you choose to enjoy them by knowing they're there, whether you choose to enjoy them by viewing them with your family, or whether you choose to hunt them, there is value, I would argue, for almost anybody in Arizona to share in our belief that this is a success story for conservation.